Hello slash x slash, first time poster here on 4chan. I have been thinking about posting on 4chan especially slash x slash about what you are going to read about, a mix of slash k slash and there too, but I kept it hidden for a long time because of personal things that happened in my life since then and also because of me thinking it was just going to be some temporary thing. I was wrong so here I am. This is going to be a green text but there is a lot of information and specifics so I'll try to keep it as clean as I can with timestamps, some visual slash audio proof and as much details as possible. There is going to be multiple people involved in these events, around 5 including me, so I will create some fake names. Joe, male, closest friend of mine, Sam, female, Joe's girlfriend, Max, male, Sam's best friend and Ryan, male, Joe's friend. This happened in France, so please understand the laws and other things that are mentioned. This is going to be a very long post, so please hang on. Be me, in my early 20s, a military gear mong and overall spook enthusiast. Wanted to do urbex for a long time now, but every time there has been something that stopped me from going. September of 2020, Father dies unexpectedly at the end of the month, I am devastated and shocked but I hold on, some friends contact me again and I try to clear my head from the recent event. Joe, who contacted me to try to clear my head and to make me feel better, tells me to come to his place to have a drink, I accept. Sam, Ryan and Max are also here. We all have a drink together, moderately. Joe and I end up in the kitchen where we end up talking about spirits, and I tell him that I hope my father rests easy. It turns into a wholesome moment, glad to have him as a friend. Conversation then shifts into asking ourselves if those things exists and we also end up thinking about possible abandoned areas, Joe tells me about an abandoned sanatorium in a forest midway in the mountains where we already went during the day long ago but never explored the place entirely. I just remembered about it when he told me. We then talk about urbex and I mention how much I'd like to do something like that during the night. We both like the idea and we ask the others if they'd want to join, everybody agrees and so we plan it. Beginning of October, a few days later, we settle for a Saturday night since we are all free. This marks the beginning of a multiple set of events that happened in different nights. Before heading there. I locate the area on a strategic maps app that I had, called MGRS and UTM map, put a few markers on it and we have a briefing to plan things out. What we are doing is not legal in any way, so we are making sure we are careful enough, pick related. Each flag corresponds to a building, there are six in total. The red flag is the main building, supposedly most interesting one to visit, with each group of buildings inside of an orange circle to calculate the distance of each areas. On the top right of the picture, you have a red arrow that you can barely see on top of the road. This is the parking lot where we stopped with our two cars, you can see a clear field. As you can see, there are multiple entrances, multiple exits and you can even rejoin the road from the other side of the complex, which can be useful if there is security. But this is obviously the least of our problems. There are multiple nights to it. Night 1, First Encounter and Happenings. We arrived at approximately 2100 hours at the complex, it was already dark and we stayed on the parking lot near the complex for around 30 minutes gearing up and had another briefing to make sure everything was understood before entering. We kind of got all the intel we could about the complex, and it is an abandoned sanatorium. Six buildings. Most of them are open with little to nothing stopping you from going inside. As mentioned earlier, it is illegal to go inside, so we were keeping a lookout for security and possible people that passed by the whole time. Anyway, at around 21.30, we moved in, our goal was simple, to explore, map the area and enjoy the urbex in a safe manner, making sure everyone was careful and understood that it can turn dangerous very quickly. We however heard things about the place, so naturally, that's why we chose it in particular. It is not the safest place, there has been rumors of cultists, more precisely Satanists, that used those grounds at night, 
but also your common tagger that just wants to have fun or other party goers, so anyone really. So there I was, with medium duty gear, and four other people, with different kind of stuff but mostly light type of gear, we all went for a more civilian, concealed look, except for me. We didn't bring any firearms, mainly because of the road and because of other reasons that will come into play later on, you'll see. Mediumly geared with an FM12 gas mask with filters, no filters when outside the buildings, filters when going inside, com slash amplified headset, bump helmet for head with white light on it, riot gear protection, mostly for arms and legs, melee weapons, non-lethal and lethal, plus things to subdue anybody that tries something bad. I was ahead of the group, four other people with lights, on point, entering the complex toward the first yellow flag, top right of the picture, with white lights. Every one of us had lights, and we were sticking close to each other the whole time. We enter the first building, tags everywhere potentially made during the day, it is a big building with around five floors, huge staircase in the middle with elevators on the side and another huge opened part in the back with rooms. We started with the bottom part, clearing every rooms the best we could as sneakily and fast as possible. All clear, I check my watch, it is now 21.50. We then move up another floor, clear it and then decided to not go up too much because of the crumbling danger, plus the layout would potentially be the same anyway. Then comes Max, he was telling us that he wanted to visit the third floor specifically. Why? No idea, he just felt like he wanted to do that. We told him it was a bad idea, but he did it anyway, he came back two minutes later and told us there was nothing, we told him to not take unnecessary risks, he agreed and we moved back down. We moved to the other building, second yellow flag below the first one, however, we see crashed cars in front of it. Apparently, my friend Joe already went here not long ago and it wasn't here. It is a recent crash, there are several cars with surgical masks inside, definitely happened recently. I take a video of the first car quickly, battery is at around 95%. We then start moving again. We didn't enter the second building and moved on to the taller and bigger main building where we planned to enter, red flag. However it was blocked off and we decided to keep it for last. We moved to the fourth building, yellow flag below the red flag. Entered it, cleared the bottom and first floor, it was literally the same layout and it was around 2240 when we came out. And that's when shit started happening. Two of the group, Ryan and Sam decided they wanted to go back to the car on the parking lot, they were too spooked and stayed to keep a lookout instead of staying with us three. All good, we sent them back to the car and they stayed inside one of them, phone ready to signal us for anything and stay in contact. So we are now three, we move to the building at the bottom, same layout, however this one had an outer building that looked like a garage with burnt cars inside. We went in and it started raining, important detail as our footprints were now visible inside the building since we were drenched and the inside was somewhat dry. There is another exit on the other side. One of us hears footsteps inside as we are leaving the building, we all turn and there was nobody. We then see two fresh footprints on the side we didn't go to, however, there was just two footprints, no continuation at all on them, in the middle of the other fucking exit. We got ready for possible human contact at first with non-lethal, taser and batons, as we didn't want to kill anybody, so we then basically made sure it was entirely clear. And it was, nobody else around. After thinking about it for a bit, we then headed for the last building, making sure that we'll go back to our cars right after checking it, we don't want to encounter anybody else. As we arrived to the last building, yellow flag on the bottom left of the map, we swept the bottom floor, forcefully opening a room that revealed some sort of dead generator, we looked around and moved to the first floor, I got a short video of it. Notice the static noise in the background, I was close to the end of the hallway, something deep in my mind kept me from going in the last room, I left afterward. Also, my phone battery was getting drained like hell and I noticed it was mostly dead. I could only record one video and it died. It only happened for my phone though, one of our flashlights was also malfunctioning, 
It flickered and turned off the moment we started leaving the building, and that's when we decided to go back to the car to join the others and leave, but we heard sounds coming from within the building we just were inside of, behind us. I had the feeling I was being watched and it sounded like footsteps and rustling. We almost instantly ran back to the car, however, we stopped at the central building after we heard a branch crack on our left side in the big wooded area in between yellow flag 1, top right, and the red flag. Halfway there, we got a phone call from the people in the car, something white and apparently heavy got on the front part of their car and it made it shake so hard that it moved it. They sent us a panicked call on the phones, we were already on alert so we instinctively went back to the car as fast as we could. The whole time though, we could almost not hear anything on the phone, as if something was fucking with it. Coming back to the car, we saw that their car left, they went to the closest city in search of safety. We checked around the car for any sightings of the entity but found nothing. Until we left toward their direction. We went the same way as them and we literally saw the white ball of sword on the right side of the road, literally headed for the same direction. It moved around one kilometer on the side of the road from the time they moved to the time we crossed its path. I did a 180 on the empty road after seeing it to try and intercept it or get a better view, but it was gone. We then regrouped in the nearby city and debriefed, they explained that as they were waiting in the car, they saw something inside of my car while they were waiting, a black figure in my driver's seat that, my car was next to them at the time, they then felt the white thing and saw it on the front of their car, they drove off in panic and they saw it chase after them while they were leaving. There was no damage on the car, no real marks that showed it was there, just some dirt where it supposedly hit. That's the first time we went at night, it was just a bit before 2300 hours when weird stuff started happening and around 2330 when we arrived at the car and they got spooked. Max and one of the persons in the fleeing car, Sam, will be important on the second encounter. Picture is the destroyed car we found. Night 2, second encounter and happenings. A few days later, we decided to go again at around the same time, at 2100 hours. However, we came more prepared. After debriefing everything and talking about it, the white thing was apparently a physical entity of some kind, we do not know what, but it was determined to make them flee and interacted with the car. We do not know what the other black entity was, but who knows. I have been thinking that maybe the white entity was a good one, and making them flee because of the black entity. Again, who knows, it's purely speculations. Before going, we stopped way further in another city and ate some pizza on a cool looking parking lot, pick related, and we decided to be way quicker and plan it way more than before. I got heavier duty gear for a possible physical encounter, a plate carrier with ballistic plates inside, level 3 plus ultra lightweight polyethylene, a liner vest below, level IIIA that is also stab proof, along with trauma plates pauldrons and groin protection attached to the plate carrier, overall level III rated but also impact slash stab resistant. Believe me when I say that French laws about body armor are pretty relaxed, weapons not so much unfortunately, still no guns. We also got better flashlights and spare batteries, however I wish I also got chem lights because they glitched again at some point. Damn tech. Or damn ghosts messing with it. So overall, I was pretty nicely armored myself, I guess I overdid it even, because it bounced back at us later on. Our goal this time was to take pictures of the cars, the plates that was still on the cars and gather and tell along with way better overall pictures. We got an actual camera with us for that effect and I even got my GoPro Hero 3. We arrived at the place a little later, at around 2145 hours, however, we stayed on the parking lot way longer and scanned the area from outside to see if we saw anything weird or heard any noises. It was mostly calm, I personally did not see anything, but my friend Joe and Ryan said they saw a white thing moving inside the second building facing the parking, bottom right yellow flag on the first pick, on the fourth floor. After waiting on the parking lot for around 30 minutes, it was now 22.20 and we decided to move in according to plan, as fast as we could and get out not long afterward. However, 
A few minutes after entering, only having made around 50 meters inside of the complex, I halted everybody and we started hearing a lot of footsteps and rustling all around us, in the bushes, in the buildings and I heard faint whispering in my comms, we felt something didn't want us there. Now, I am thinking that it is because of the equipment I had, it thought we were possibly attacking it, thus it became aggressive, but that's only a theory. So we left as fast as we could but remained on the parking lot. It was around 22.30, we were talking about what just happened, Ryan was going apeshit fearing that something worst might happen if we stuck around, I was talking to Joe about what we should do next, that we should come back during daytime and not stick around during nighttime as it is obviously too dangerous and stupid. Joe agreed, but Sam wanted to go inside now. There was a few buildings we haven't seen, but one piqued her particular interest, she really wanted to go into the other yellow flag building that was near the road, the yellow flag on the top left of the map picture. I don't know why she wanted that, but I got a bad feeling about it so I told her not to do so, she argued back. Joe also told her, and she went quiet for a bit. Max wasn't saying much. He was sitting on the side of the car but at some point, him and Sam started arguing with each other as I was looking away toward the complex. Apparently, Max said something about Sam that she heard and it got her mad, I can't remember what it was though, but it apparently made no sense. Sam and Max started almost physically fighting each other, now, I don't understand myself but it was such a sudden change of emotions because they're usually best friends. They never fought before and especially not like that, it's as if they wanted to kill each other. We separated them and got very confused at the situation at the time. Sam then went fuck it, I'm going in the complex, we're not going to stand here all night and forcefully started making her way toward the building I mentioned earlier. Me and Joe instantly went for her and physically stopped her as well as dragging her back to the car, that's the moment where I personally said fuck that shit we're leaving. Max was out of the car at this point, and Sam went into it. Max was already sitting down in the same car as Sam but I knew it wasn't going to be good so I grabbed his arm and told him to come with us instead, because it wasn't good for the both of them. Good call on my side because it went really bad afterward. So, Ryan and Sam went into their own car. Me, Joe and Max went in our own car. Joe stayed at the front with me and Max stayed at the back. I didn't trust Max to stay next to me because of a fear that he might try to grab the wheel and make us have an accident. It was around 23.40 when we left the sanatorium. We dipped to go back to our place and end this situation, then possibly figure out what the fuck was wrong with them. However, as we were driving on the road, Joe keeping a close eye on Max with his taser, Max being completely silent and looking down with his hood up in the back, and Ryan driving in front of us. We had to stop because Sam was literally biting her own hand bloody. We stopped on the side of the road and I recall Joe going outside to check on Sam. Max suddenly wanted to go outside but be as far as he could from Sam. I allowed him to do so, going outside too and keeping an eye on him with my baton. Joe came back rushing, with his first aid kit and asked if I had anything she could bite on. I gave him a spare black leather belt that I had and he took it. Max was further away this time, I told him to come back multiple times but he wouldn't listen, so I went, grabbed him by the arm and got him to the car again. Apparently, Sam started screaming in Ryan's car, was banging around and started to bite herself bloodied, so he had to stop because they would probably crash otherwise. I decided to call the other car and stay on a call to have some in real time update with Ryan, it proved very useful for the trip. We arrived at a parking lot in front of Joe's house, we stopped and as I was stopping my car next to Ryan's, Max told me to go further away and stay far, he didn't want to be close to Sam. So I did, I went to the other side of the parking lot and stopped, he agreed that it was far enough. She fucked up my belt, literally ripped it apart and rendered it useless. Rest in peace poor leather belt. We were now in the city and I still had my whole attire. People were passing by from time to time but it was mostly calm, they must have thought me and Joe were police and stopped some drunk teenagers giving them a drunk test because nobody questioned it, which was pretty hilarious at the time.
This is a complicated part, I was confused at the time even though I noticed pretty fast what was happening, it both shocked and angered me, mostly because of how frustrating it was to interact with the two and the fact it continued until early morning. Ryan is a believer of the paranormal and he carried some stuff with him at the time like white sage sticks, palo santo wood, lavender and even cedar, he gave me and Joe some of each that we then used around our area, the cars, Max and Sam. They really disliked it, it wasn't a problem for us. We tried talking to them, Max said that it was like he was in shackles, he couldn't move his body but only a few fingers. They were both very mad at each other. Max was constantly asking if Sam was close by and told us to keep her away at all cost. We obviously did that, we wouldn't allow blood to be spilled. While Ryan was talking to Sam and Joe was constantly alternating between our two groups, I was talking to Max, trying to unfold what the hell it was about. He told me to keep the fumes away and that when he closed his eyes, he could see a little girl. A little girl? Can you describe her to me? A little girl with a red skirt, she has medium length chestnut hair, very young, but she has no face. What the fuck dot jpeg? What the fuck of course it's a little girl. Oh god fear, game, memories intensifies. Try not to panic, ask Joe to come over and tell him sneakily. Tell him to go ask Sam if she sees anything. Sam says that she sees a different entity, it looks meaner, it looks like it has red eyes. A grin with teeth going on both sides of the face but it is apparently also a mix in between a werewolf and a human, it apparently looks so terrifying that she has panic attacks every time she sees it. Asks her if she sees anything else. My face when she says she also see a half of a little girl but it's very faint. They never mentioned it to her, she is not supposed to know. Okay, think of something. We try to talk to them for a bit and figure out more but nothing works, then we have the idea of trying to see what would happen if we made them go near each other. Terribly idea PNG. At this point, my car is full of sage smoke, and Max can move a bit more. Sam apparently feels a bit better at some point and she decides to go near Max to help our cause. We don't tell Max and Sam gets close to the car. Max starts shaking and he asks where Sam is. We lie to him, but he cannot see her. He knows we are lying even though he cannot see her, he can feel her. We tell her to come here, this motherfucker then grab my sage stick putting sage particles and flammable shit all in the back seat of my car even after I told him to not grab it. I hit him with my baton in the hand yelling at him that he is getting taste the next time he does that shit. He goes passive again, I tell him to calm down while also trying to calm myself down. He then relaxes, at this point, I think the girl that is inside of him dips for a minute or so, either because of fear or the other entity. I make Max sit on the edge of my car from the inside, Sam is not in front of him and she's telling him that everything is okay now, I have no clue what Tryon did to her so that she could be normal again, but props to him for handling it on his side. She is trying to use emotions to drag him back toward her, being best friends I think this is the only logical thing to do, remembering old memories and making his true self come out on top, making him come back to his senses I guess. After a sort of wholesome discussion with her trying to make him stand up, they both hug. They both started crying uncontrollably for a few seconds and the sage literally blows up, it fucking blows up disintegrates and Max fell unconscious for five seconds. I have no idea what happened but I saw it with my own eyes and it still terrifies me. We went to pick him up and I moved back a bit, apparently he was himself again and felt better, so was Sam. We all decided to go to another city that was near the sea, even though it was now 01.30, 1 a.m., to hopefully relax. We arrived around 20 minutes later and walked toward the rocks slash sea. We sat on a bench, I noticed that Max was silent again the moment we stopped the car, I notify Joe and Ryan, they both tell me they don't think it's over yet. I keep a close eye on them from now on. We were talking about the ordeal earlier near the rocks, all of us on a bench and around. Remember when I told you it was a complicated and frustrating part? Well, here is why. 
there is no way to know if it's over or not. I was keeping a very close eye on them both looking at their eyes, how they reacted and making sure they weren't going to pounce on each other the first moment they get. I then felt something weird in my back, at the bottom of my spine. It made my skin crawl and I turned instantly, I cursed and almost yelled I swear to God, if you try that again I will fucking kill you. And it stopped. It was as if my emotions changed in a matter of seconds and I couldn't control myself. There was nobody behind me. Joe looked at me confused, he knew something was up, I moved back from the group and said it's not over, guys. Well, guess what? It happened right after, a minute or so later. I noticed that both Sam's and Max's eyes changed. They both looked like they wanted to kill each other again, in a matter of a second, they then both went for each other's throats. It took me and Joe to keep Max away entirely, we are both way more buff than him, it was unusual for him to be that strong. Sam was held by Ryan only and pushed back, she gave up almost instantly. We went for a walk with Max for a bit, Ryan did the same with Sam on the other side, near the beach side. We stopped at the other end of the area, think some kind of rocky dock on the side of some rocks and the sea, well, at the end of that. We sat Max down on the ground and we waited, I tried to talk to him but he wouldn't answer. He then looked downward and started whispering things, I looked at him for a bit, asked him what he saw and he described the little girl again this time with a face and more details appears. Black top, she has a delicate looking mouth, semi-slit light brown eyes. Her hair was now curled, it felt like she was scared and that she also had hatred within. I sighed and looked at the beach searching for Sam and Ryan, I could see them on the other side talking to each other. I was already tired of this bullshit and just wanted it to stop, physically tired too. I then heard the most terrifying thing I've ever heard from behind me, but not where Max was sitting, from behind him. A very low-pitched voice that sounded like nobody around here, not the voice of a human, the actual voice of a demon. I turned out of confusion because I thought he said something to me and I asked wait, what did you just say to me? However, I noticed it wasn't him that spoke the moment I turned. Joe told me he didn't speak though and he didn't hear anything. I thought I was going insane, I told him what I heard but I honestly can't recall it. Just thinking about it terrifies me now. I moved around and told Joe we needed to leave, it was way too late and we had to go. It was already around 2 am. We gathered the others and left by car, but before we could leave, Max told me that the little girl waved goodbye to him, as if she was leaving. Him and Sam then turned up normal for the rest of the night, we had to drive them back to their place. However, as you guessed, it wasn't finished. A few days later, we called Joe's mother who is a medium and does purifications, we told her and she supposedly fixed Sam. However, Max has never been fixed. Max has devolved into taking hard drugs and has been acting way differently since then. Sam has been getting better and better and I got a purification too, as well as having some of my personal items shielded or something, nothing really got to me and I am doing fine, I am however still confused about all of that. We've all had very weird dreams since then, about the exact same little girl doing trials for us in our dreams. Joe has had different dreams but the latest one was a dream where he had to face her one on one and he defeated her with a sword. She didn't come back for him since then. Sam also had dreams about her, but she cannot remember them. I've had one lucid dream about her where she ambushed me in some abandoned manner and I ended up eating her from a huge window. She didn't come back for me since then. Ryan also had a dream the same kind as Joe's and he managed to defeat her as well. Sam still tells us that she feels like something is missing from her and that she needs to go recover it in the building where she initially wanted to go before we dragged her away. I bought around 20 chem lights of red and green color to mark things and got other equipments like a drone, I am going to work toward a firearms license so I can defend myself better as well. We are however facing another containment about COVID-19 and it's not going to be several months before we go there again.